Let us rejoice in the rise High as the listening skies Let it resound loud as the rolling sea Oh, sing a song full of the faith that the darkness has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Thank you. The back story on this is that you should know that four years ago I approached President Clark about celebrating uh, African American History Month, about leadership pulling together an African American History Month experience. And so today, for the fourth consecutive year, we are doing just that. A bit of history matters. At the start of the 20th century, the history of African Americans did not surpass the subjugation of slavery. However, today it is clear that African Americans have significantly impacted the development of the social, political, and economic structures of our country. It's never too late and it gets never too old to lift up those who may thought it important for us to celebrate who we are. Let's bring forward President Clark. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is a great day. Uh, I just want to say, first of all, I want to thank the councilwoman. Um, she has always made sure that we remember not only our history, in addition to our future. Uh, councilwoman, I, I like to tell a story about how when I, when I first became the council president, and I would always have these little private moments, and I would always ask her, Blinding, how am I doing? Right? And she was, she was you know, every now and then, a little brutal. Right, but one of the things that's important is Blondell understands that people need to get a perspective on what they do, a perspective on their historical knowledge of what they are doing. And she has been very, very good in ensuring that on an annual basis, this is our fourth year now, Councilwoman, our fourth year in acknowledging all of our forefathers and foremothers in terms of what they've done to ensure that individuals on this stage uh, who happen to be African Americans, and, and frankly speaking, individuals on the states who happen not to be African Americans, because we, we voted for you too, uh, <laughs> had this great opportunity to be a member of the city council. So I want to uh, first thank you, Blondie, so much for all of the great work you've done on this. And I want to thank all of the individuals who have been supportive of this program over the years, over the last four years, and look forward to continuing this. And, and again, I want to thank uh, all of the individuals who have come before us and did all these wonderful things that allow us to be able to call ourselves uh, citizens in this wonderful country that we have. So thank you all so much, and, and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm going to lean on my teaching experience again and say everyone over to my left. When folks are performing, they really rather see your eyes and not the tops of your heads. So if you could move to the center so that as our council members present remarkable passages from those who've come before us, it makes our heart happy, Matt, when we can see your eyes, Matt, in the center. That would include you too, Councilman Frank DiCicco. With that, we're going to bring you quotes from the Civil Rights Movement, led by our Majority Leader, Bobby Heenan. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things will not matter. Today, the choice is no longer between violence and nonviolence. It is neither nonviolence or non-existence. 
Also, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., nonviolence is a powerful and just weapon. It is a weapon unique in history, which cuts without wounding and ennobles the man who wields it. It is a sword that heals. Rosa Parks, people always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, but that isn't true. No, the only tired I was was tired of giving in. I have learned over the years that when one's mind is made up, this diminishes fear. Knowing what must be done does away with fear. Each person must live their life as a model for others. Have you ever been hurt and the place tries to heal a bit and you just pull the scar off of it over and over again? The Honorable John E. Lewis, United States Congressman representing the state of Georgia. You cannot be afraid to speak up and speak out for what you believe. You have to have courage, raw courage. To those who have said, be patient and wait, we must say that we cannot be patient. We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. By the forces of our demands, our determination, and our numbers, we shall send a desegregated South into a thousand pieces, put them together in the image of God and democracy. We must wake up, America, wake up. But we cannot stop and we will, cannot be patient. For if not us, then who? If not now, then when? Voices of women in the movement, Deborah Wiles. This is how it works. Everything is connected. Every choice matters. Every person is vital and valuable and worthy of respect. There is no noise as powerful as the sound of the marching feet of a determined people. Violence never really deals with the basic evils of the situation. Violence may murder the murderer, but it doesn't murder murder. Violence may murder the liar, but it doesn't murder lies. It doesn't establish truth. Violence may even murder the dishonest man, but it doesn't murder dishonesty. Violence may go to the point of murdering the hater, but it doesn't murder hate. It may increase hate. It is always a descending spiral leading nowhere. This is the ultimate weakness of violence. It multiplies evil and violence in the universe. It doesn't solve any problems. <clears throat> the words bad timing came to be ghosts haunting our every move in Birmingham. Yet people who used this argument were ignorant of the background of our planning. They did not realize it was ridiculous to speak of timing when the clock of history has shown that the Negro has already suffered 100 years of delay. Voices from the movement. Sammy Davis, Jr. We can't answer King's assassination with violence. That would be the worst tribute we could pay him. Malcolm X, without education, you're not going anywhere in this world. Education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who are prepared for it today. Andrew Young, former U.S. Ambassador and Mayor of Atlanta, Georgia. Freedom is a struggle and we do it together. Not only together as black citizens, but black and white together. The unsung heroes of the civil rights movement were always the wives and the mothers. Dr. Maya Angelou, we all should know that diversity makes for a rich tapestry, and we must understand that all the threads of the tapestry are equal and valued no matter what their color. We may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. I'm convinced of this. Good done anywhere is good done everywhere. For a change, start by speaking to people rather than walking by them like they're stones that don't matter. As long as you're breathing, it's never too late to do some good. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I still have a dream, a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. One day this nation will rise up and live up to its creed. We hold, quote, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. 
If you, can't, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't walk, I'm sorry. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Women in the movement, Fannie Lou Hamer. Nobody's free until everyone is free. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. Shirley Chisholm. Service is the rent that you pay for room on this earth. I don't measure America by its achievement, but by its potential. Bayard Rustin, one of the architects of the Civil Rights Movement. If we desire a society of peace, then we cannot achieve such a society through violence. If we desire a society without them discrimination, then we must not discriminate against anyone in the process of building this society. If we desire a society that is democratic, then democracy must become a means as well as an end. To be afraid is to behave as if the truth were not true. When an individual is protesting society's refusal to acknowledge his dignity as a human being, his very act of protest confers dignity on him. Julian Bond, co-founder of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. The humanity of all Americans is diminished when any group is denied rights granted to others. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort, comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Never, never be afraid to do what's right, especially if the well-being of a person or animal is at stake. Society's punishments are small compared to the wounds we inflict on our soul when we look the other way. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. All progress is precarious, and the solution of one problem brings us face to face with another problem. A genuine leader is not a, searcher for a cons not a searcher for consensus, but a molder of consensus. The day we see the truth and cease to speak is the day we begin to die. This is so fitting. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. People fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other. The time is always right to do the right thing. On some positions, cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? And vanity comes along and asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic, nor popular, but he or she must do it because conscience tells him or her it is right. In 1965, Dr. King came to Philadelphia and from the corner of 40th and Lancaster, he said, don't wait until next year to get in this struggle in Philadelphia. Don't wait until tomorrow morning to get in this struggle in Philadelphia. Don't wait until an hour from now to get into the struggle, Philadelphia. Get in this conversation now. Just a tiny little minute, just 60 seconds in it, but eternity is in it. And by our good friend, the Honorable Augusta Alexander Clark, 
former councilwoman, people need to understand that our similarities are greater than our differences, and our differences are merely, are merely cosmetic. Awesome. Let's salute our council members, please. Thank you, council members. Thank you very, very much, council members. You may be seated. No experience of this type happens because it's an I thing. It's most absolutely a we thing. We are here today because we've had the support and energy of the following individuals. Ed Hazori standing center back. Thank you, Ed. And Lauren Vitas, who helped secure the financial support for this evening, afternoon. Valerie Gay of Art Sanctuary, who joined with Catherine Gilmore and Haji Malumium on my team to pull together today's programming. I think arts and culture is so important because it really becomes the glue that binds us, irrespective of our differences. To all of the staff and President Clark's office who worked closely with my team, and lastly, a thank you to all of you in the audience for staying after City Council to enjoy this fourth annual celebration. I am always uh, struck by art, and you should know that PAFA, right down the street, has an exhibit right now featuring a young African-American artist, Kahende Wally, if you care to take a visit down there. We always have our African-American Art Museum. Art Sanctuary is right at 16th and Bainbridge. And of course, we have the Philadelphia Museum of Art and the Barnes Foundation, also with beautiful African-American art collections. So if, treat yourself, take your date or your spouse or family member, so some significant other, and experience all the art that Philadelphia has to offer. Spoken word is something that I appreciate but can't do anything with it. Performing arts are amazing, and I was fortunate to meet with this next young woman, a student at the University of the Arts, and read her inventory, which is not the appropriate word, of writings that she's completed. Uh, let's welcome Alicia A.Q. Watson Mitchell, who will provide us, give us, entertain us, lift our spirits with spoken word. Hello, uh, my name is Alicia Watson Mitchell. Um, I am a student at University of the Arts. Um, I am a creative writing major, poetry concentration. I just want to say it's such an honor to be here um, today, and especially in the spirit of Black History Month. Um, I'm granddaughter of Yvette P.W. Mitchell, who worked with the National Congress of Black Women, which uh, um, I grew up with, like Ona Weldon, C. Dolores Tucker, Shirley Chisholm, uh, was inspired a lot of movement in that organization. And um, I'm also the great grandniece great, great grannies. I'm related to um, Amelia Boynton Robinson, who uh, just passed. So thank you again for the councilwoman to inviting me out this noon, evening, afternoon, sorry. Um, this poem is titled That John. I created it for um, welcoming the students into Philadelphia for my school, um, University of the Arts. And so I hope that you all can see a little bit of Philadelphia in this poem. Broad Street, is the aorta of my city. When I speak my name, you can feel the scent of Philadelphia on my skin. Nails lacquered with cheese whiz, lips glossed with water ice. Loose cigarettes passed out like Jehovah's pamphlets. Bibles pressed to chests like a bulletproof vest. Um, Excuse me, sir, but do you have a moment for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Fireworks are gunshots. They both fall from the sky like unanswered prayers. Paranoia loaded pistols. He told me that killing was the only thing that he was good at. Crosses crucified into skin with ink. No one can judge me but God. Jack Daniels tongued the taste buds more than Jesus' name. He chimes his cup to the wind like crickets gossiping. Gloves so tattered you can play the guitar in his palm. His eyes 
filled with the pain of forgetting when sidewalks were used for more than sleeping, too honest to steal, too ugly for prostitution, too much pride for a homeless shelter, another school shut down, another jail built. FAFSA ran out of funding, but there will always be a bed for you in federal prisons. Got that tree out, and I ain't talking about oak. Lungs hazed and ashed hashed vapors. The alley's air smells like mango shampoo and urine. Cheap beers and cigars make one interesting of a good time. Timberlands melt snow into icy pavements. Gum stains DNA into cement. The inverse pattern looks like stars lying lazily against the navy nights. My streets speak a secret language, replacing every word in the dictionary with John. Broad Street Bullies is the only form of bullying that we tolerate. The Mummer's Parade is the official sign for Christmas carols to retire until December. This neighborhood was my first stage. Street lights were spotlights, turning abandoned grounds into muraled backgrounds. Hoodies fixed on heads like crowns, bodies tatted up like subways, melanin colored houses. Buildings wear graffiti like it's our medal of honor. This city makes me a social stigma. If you peel back the dirt, you will see a diamond. This hood is my home. Broad Street is the aorta of my city. My heart beats a flat line when I can no longer feel the scent of Philadelphia on my skin. Thank you. Philadelphia has Sonia Sanchez, Philadelphia has Jill Scott, and Philadelphia has Alicia A.Q. Watson Mitchell. Thank you very, very much. We want to thank also WRD for uh, giving us an opportunity to spread the word across the Philadelphia community that Philadelphia City Council indeed does care about our African American history. We want to invite up Voices from Heaven, that's what I call you, You, this uh, Sharon Baptist Church resides in the 4th Councilmatic District. However, I do know that Councilwoman Janie Blackwell is an active, devoted member of Sharon Baptist. So let's please invite up Sharon Baptist Church to lift us up in song. Can you give them some music while they are pulling together? Can y'all hear me? We meet you, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are the Sharon Baptist Mass Choir, and we just thank you for this honor and privilege. And as we just look back and pay homage to those who've gone before us in honoring Black History Month, we just want to say that there is no way, whether we're black, white, Asian, that we can make it but through and without him, there is no that. We can make it without him, so thank you very much.
decided to make it all my own, own, own my own. But these heavy burdens, oh, they've got a little bit. brotherly love and sisterly affection. So we thank you again. God is great.
Wherever two people are gathered, there should be song. Let's salute Sharon Baptist Church. Let's lift up Sharon Baptist Church. Thank you again, Sharon Baptist Church, for your voices from heaven. We always top off our African American history celebration. Welcome, Danny Grace. Welcome. We always top off our African American history celebration with a soul food lunch. It is scrub delicious and deliciously fattening. How about that? So you can please get your bookmark ticket. You have to have a bookmark ticket to get into the African American history brunch. You'll be entertained by sisters laying down their hands. Food is provided by Arnez, exquisite catering and the art curators, Jan Claiborne and Valerie Gay. While you eat the food, you can enjoy the exquisite art. Please join us next door. And thank you very, very much, colleagues, for being a part of this experience. <laughs>